So, pre mid sem we were looking at uh, problem discretization and Towards the end, we looked at uh, how to discretize a boundary value problem using method of these squares and then we moved out to the Gelarkin method. And I suppose you have learned more about Gelarkin method in the mid sem. You know more about the Gelarkin method. Uh, now, before I move on to now tools, I just want to finish off one topic that is d square estimation. So, there is one more one more piece remaining uh, as far as least square estimation is concerned. We talked about model building using least squares method of least squares and I gave several examples though uh, through while talking about least squares though I did not formally introduce to model building. Uh, I am going to do that a little bit today and then I am going to discuss a method called a Gauss Newton method. A Gauss Newton method is a cross between Newton's method also called Newton Raphson method and least square estimation. So, this method is used when the parameters in the model appear non-linearly and there is no transformation by which you can uh, you know linearize the nonlinear model. If you have such a model, then you cannot use linear least squares, you have to use something else, and that is Gauss Newton method. So, today I am going to spend time on a little bit uh, on model building first, then move on to uh, Gauss Newton method. So, uh, this function approximations in engineering is very very common and that is what I want to concentrate on. So, I am not just uh, restricting myself to polynomial approximations, I want to talk about function approximations in general and here uh, we are talking about we are talking about a function y is some function of a vector x and some parameters theta plus error. We are talking about a model of this form where f is some function ok. y here is typically a scalar value x can be x can be a n dimensional vector in general and theta is an m dimensional vector e is the approximation error. Well, uh, when I am writing this model I am already making some assumptions and I want to uh, I want to free you from that particular assumption right now to begin with. In the begin with let us not worry about this error where the error appears we will look at the error little more systematically. So, y is some dependent variable, y is some dependent variable, x is a vector of independent variables, theta are the parameters in the model and then I want to fit a model of this form ok. I want to fit a model of this form and I have given you examples. First example was C p versus C square or C p is equal to a plus b t plus c t square plus d t cube ok. In this particular example, in this particular example we have y corresponding to c p and x corresponding to t. I gave you second example was Nusset number equal to you have correlations like this right and in this case y corresponds to in this case y corresponds to Nusset number and x corresponds to Prandtl number, Reynolds number 
and mu by mu s. Okay, x corresponds to these three variables Prandtl, Reynolds and mu by mu s whereas y corresponds to Nusselt number. You have correlations for Schmidt number, you have you have correlation for Sherwood number, mass transfer. Now, now the nice thing about these two particular models, models in engineering, I am talking about function approximations because here you are using exponential function, here you are using polynomial function, okay using exponential function for approximation, you are using polynomial function for approximation, different kinds of functions are used for approximations, okay. Polynomial is the simplest one, but not always you use polynomial, you use all kinds of other functions, okay. And then the problem is given data of Cp and temperature, you want to estimate A, B, C, A, B, C, D or in this case given data of the set number, Prandtl number, Reynolds number and mu by mu as you want to estimate A, alpha, beta, gamma, right. And what was nice about these two models was you could transform them to a linear in parameter form. This is already a linear in parameter form, isn't it? The model parameters appear linear. When you say something is linear, you have to remember the basic definition. Any function g of x, so g of theta, okay. If you, if you can write alpha theta 1 plus beta theta 2 is equal to alpha g of theta 1 plus beta g of theta 2. When I am saying that this particular model is linear in parameter, what is the parameter vector here? Theta is a, b, c. What is the parameter vector here? a, alpha, beta, gamma. Okay. So, when I am saying that this particular model is linear in parameter which means this definition holds with respect to theta. Okay. If I take 2 theta, theta 1, theta 2, okay, I can write f of theta, g of theta will be in this case g of theta will be a plus bt plus ct square. Okay. If I take 2 theta parameters a, b, c and a prime, b prime, c prime, then I can write as addition of two functions, okay, which means a, b, c here appear in a linear manner. If you try to apply this definition to the second function, it will not hold, okay, because if you, this is not a linear in parameter function, right, the parameters are alpha, beta, gamma, obviously they are not appearing in a linear manner, okay. So, but the saving grace here was I could do a transformation, okay, so I could actually make a transformation which made the model look like uh, look like a linear in parameter model and that transformation was log of and u was log a plus alpha log pr plus beta log Reynolds number plus gamma log mu by mu s, okay. So, with respect to this transform model, when I said the y was y corresponding to log of n u, theta corresponded to, you know, log a alpha beta gamma. When my theta was this, with respect to this parameters, these parameters and the transform model, Okay, we had a linear in parameter model and we could use linear least squares. Okay, we could use linear least squares. But the problem of estimating model parameters okay, appears in many, many engineering problems where the model is not transformable. Okay, I will give you simple examples from uh, what you know in chemical engineering. So, let us take two examples which you cannot do any linearizing transformation. So, one of this is the friction factor. Just remember all these are correlations, functional approximations. These are not many times derived from some fundamental physics. There is some fundamental physics of course, when you write dimensionless groups, 
but beyond that when you find out those alpha beta gamma okay those are correlations so i would call them as a semi empirical models because part of it comes from actually physics the dimensionless groups arrive from you arrive at the dimensionless group from physics okay but then the correlations coefficients are from data okay so uh, we would call such models as a gray box models okay so this is the friction factor correlation so this is alpha log okay now this is a very very funny thing because uh, i want to estimate alpha beta my y here let's say if i call y as uh, you know root f if i call y as root f okay and if i call x as reynolds number okay i want to fit this correlation between friction factor and reynolds number and my my theta here is alpha and beta okay if you are given a data of friction factor versus reynolds number okay and if you want to find out alpha beta for this particular model there is no linearizing transformation uh, because because y appears here you see here because y appears here and it's very funny okay so you cannot do this in a very uh, a simple way you have to think about something else well the other correlations which you are very very familiar with are say redlich kog equation say p is equal to rt minus v minus b minus a upon root t v plus i hope i am correct so this is the redlich kog equation you don't know a and b okay you don't know a and b you will be given data of p v t okay i want to fit r of course you know i want to i want to fit i want to find a b values okay and estimate this from data i just have pvt data for a particular substance i want to find out a b okay so this is a this is a classic problem in uh, thermodynamics you want to find out a and b by these squares now mind you when you say that this is equal to this okay when you write this that this is equal to this this is equal to this these are all approximate correlations in reality they are not equal okay in reality they are not equal actually the the correct way of writing you should say that estimate of p estimate of p is equal to this that's what you should write okay it is not true p but nevertheless we uh, while using in engineering we don't really get into uh, these uh, niceties of statistics we just assume that this is the exact correlation and then we use it we don't worry about the errors in the approximation and so on uh, and when we take care of errors in approximation by doing some kind of over design so that you know your modeling errors are somehow covered okay so when you do all this uh, when you use heat transfer coefficient uh, estimated using the correlation na set number or when you use mass transfer coefficient all these are approximations they are not exact and then that is the reason why why we do some kind of over design and try to get over the problem so this now here the, pro the problem is there how do you how do you estimate the model parameters well i would like to still have uh, my paradigm of least square estimation in there and i want to get a least square estimate of theta nevertheless uh, but you know the third example is what is this correlation antoine correlation antoine correlation so antoine correlation again is not exact you know for a particular substance you go to perry's handbook and find out a b c okay these are fitted coefficients this is not this is not a true relationship this is a this is a correlation this is a function approximation 
okay that correlates uh, vapor pressure with temperature okay so in all these models in all these models you have a problem see so i would i would classify the models in two classes one is i have a model which is i have this model y is equal to f of x theta in some cases if theta appears in linear model if if the theta is appearing in non linear way in the model this is the only way i can write if theta is somehow by some transformation or something is appearing in linear model then in that case you will get y is equal to theta 1 okay see this is linear in parameter model this is general non linear in parameter model okay and this is linear in parameter model this is linear in parameter model okay when you had a linear in parameter model okay you had a nice way of you had a nice way of estimating theta 1 to theta m least square estimates what was the method when we collected the data for linear in parameter models for linear in parameter models we could write this we could write this from the data that is y1 y2 okay we could write it as a linear equation large number of equations less number of parameters and we could solve this we could solve this like this up to y capital n let's say f1 we have collected n data points right we wrote like this we said that we have large number of equations and we we assigned error in approximation only to error in the equation we assigned error in approximation to error in equation what if what if your x itself is wrong temperature measurements i am collecting temperature measurements from a plant okay and my temperature measurements have error in uh, measurement errors when i collect temperature measurements i never get exact value of what is there in the plant what is there in the system i get always an error picked up because of variety of reasons it could be you know if i have a electronic system which is collecting data there could be noise entering my data because of variety of reasons some fluctuation in the circuit some loose contact okay so temperature inside let's say my system is 100 degrees i might get 101 i might get 199 i know that boiling point of water i am dipping a thermo thermo thermometer in the at you know in bombay in boiling water it should be 100 i don't get 100 i get 100.5 100.2 in, in fact if you collect the data in the computer you will see it is all fluctuating around 100 you never get 100 actually you expect 100 right should be exactly 100 but so so when i am developing a model of this form okay my x is t but my temperature itself could be wrong okay well there could be errors in the estimation of pv okay so there are actually three kinds of errors three kinds of errors one is errors in the measurement okay well uh, in this one lecture i cannot uh, answer how to deal with all three of them it's very 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 complex business how to separate these errors and get a correct model uh, would probably require almost half a course to deal with all of them the simplest one is the so called equation error so we have three three possible sources of error your x here your y measurements your y measurements could be wrong okay your x here inputs to the model they could be wrongly measured okay pvt data i am collecting pressure pressure sensor can give me wrong data slightly wrong data 
volume estimates could be wrong temperature measurements could be wrong okay so now see when you when you propose a model you see the trouble when you are developing a model when you propose a model you are saying that true pressure equal to true volume into true whatever pvt relationship you you say that it holds for the true volume and true pressure and true but when you measure there are errors you don't know what is the truth and you take 100 measurements each one of them has an error okay so how do you how do you arrive at the correct so it's a very uh, statistically uh, or in terms of statistics it's it's not so easy problem to solve well that these are the two possible sources of errors in the measurement itself the third is that your expression which you are fitting itself is an approximation right tp versus temperature okay i may choose to fit a line or i may choose to fit a parabola or i may choose to fit a cubic equation depending upon the range i am covering okay and the fit i get you know if there is a temperature range is large i may want to fit a cubic equation if temperature range is small linear equation might do okay so there is an error when you propose a model because these are approximate correlations there is error committed when you do that and there are error committed in the measurements right now i am i am going to blame everything to equation error i am not going to worry too much about these errors okay i am not going to worry too much about errors in the measurement let's say we try to remove the errors in the measurement by taking repeated measurements and taking averages okay and we try to do some kind of compensation for let's assume for the time being uh, because dealing with modeling problem when you blame everything to equation error is much easier than dealing with the modeling problem when you want to consider all the three errors in the notes i have discussed briefly about what is done when there are all the three errors but solving that problem can become fairly fairly complex okay uh, now i just want to do one thing now my aim right now is that if i have a non linear in parameter model okay can i can i somehow extend what i could do here what what you could do here you could use method of least squares how was the method of least squares so i call this vector as capital y let's say this matrix was my a matrix this is my theta vector okay and this is my error vector this is my error vector and then i had a very nice way of estimating uh, or generating the least square estimates and then we looked at its variety of interpretations from geometric view point and from we arrived at the results from the algebra and so on so minimum of uh, with respect to theta error transpose error this we could find analytically and we got theta least square is equal to a transpose a inverse a transpose y everyone with me on this we got this least square estimates okay that is because that is because this particular model was linear in parameter model we could get least square estimates for the special case when all the errors were blame to equation errors these are called as equation errors okay i am going to blame everything to the equation errors this model general model which is non linear in parameter can i can i do something so that i use this kind of expression to arrive at a solution for the non linear model i am not able to transform i am not able to transform if if i am i am re removing here all those models which are transformable okay so all those models you know uh, the set number equal to something which are transformable i am just removing them by linearizing transformations i am talking about the models like pvt relationships redlich kong equation where you cannot transform or that friction factor that blaschier correlation it's called blaschier correlation friction factor correlation is you cannot transform there's no way you can do it okay how do you now uh, come up with a way of using this business a transform a transpose a inverse a transpose y okay and uh, still uh, estimate uh, this parameters of this theta this method which i am going to derive is called as gauss newton method 
okay gauss newton method plays a trick well as i as i told you that there are very limited options when we when it comes to approximating some things we have looked at two options previously one option was interpolation other option was taylor series approximation in fact the taylor series approximation gave rise to newton's method if you remember right i am going to use the same trick i am going to use taylor series approximation okay transform this model which is nonlinear in parameter to locally a linear in parameter model okay and form an iteration scheme by which i will be able to use something like this okay i will be able to use something like this okay and then use it for use it for parameter estimation uh okay so let's see how we do this okay so i have this model which is nonlinear in parameter model i have collected data first of all i have collected data y1 y2 y3 up to y capital n this is the dependent variable data which is collected and well x could be a vector in general x could be a vector that's why i am giving this superscript this is the notation which we have been using throughout the course x1 x2 correspondingly xn these are the data collected this is the data collected and i want to fit a function form which is y is equal to f of x theta plus error i want to fit a function form okay now before we go to this method before we go to this method of uh least squares or successive least squares gauss newton method let us first look at what is the raw problem then we'll see how to form the so what kind of equations that you have here if you have this data and this y if i am proposing a model which is equation error model i will call this equation error model this is equation error model why equation error model because i am not saying that there is any error in x or y measurements of x or y i am saying there is an overall error which is blame to equation error okay which is blame to equation error so this is or this is a combination of all possible errors that can occur in approximation there been blame to one additive term here e okay now this is a nonlinear in parameter model okay and what is the least square problem that uh, that would arise from this when i want to estimate theta so what was the problem here e transpose e if you remember here what is e transpose e this is summation i going from 1 to n e i square right okay so in this case my problem would be very very similar so i have these equations coming from this data y1 is equal to f x1 theta plus e1 y2 is equal to f x2 theta plus e2 these are my data points y1 y2 x1 x2 i am just substituting them in my equation form how many equations i'll get capital n equations i'll get large number of equations okay so likewise i'll get yn is equal to f xn theta en right i got this n equations capital n equations in how many unknowns theta there are only m unknowns so here here theta belongs to rm 
there are m parameters to be estimated m could be typically 3 or 4 parameters to be estimated you have data which is 100 200 data points large number of data points so now here you have large number of equations in only four unknowns in only four unknowns okay how do i want to estimate the estimate theta so i will define an error ei that is yi minus f xi theta okay if i guess a value of theta if i somehow guess a value of theta i can estimate the error right because x is known to me y is known to me right x is known to me y is known to me somehow i guess a value of theta okay see for example this relationship you are fitting in some homologous series you take a b c values for the previous series you get a good guess okay the may not be too too far away from the the next compound then you are giving a good guess then you can compute ei right if I, if I give a guess now the way i want to estimate theta is again by least squares so i want to estimate minimize with respect to theta sigma ei square i going from 1 to n okay let's call this let's call this objective function as phi this is my objective function this is my objective function okay how do you solve this problem what is the where, where will you get the optimum what is the necessary condition for optimality do phi by do theta equal to 0 so you will get the necessary condition for optimality the necessary condition for optimality is there are m parameters i should differentiate this do phi by do with respect to theta i set it equal to 0 how many equations i'll get i'll get m equations in m unknowns typically these m equations in m unknowns will be nonlinear with respect to theta i can solve it by newton raphson i get m equations in m unknowns theta unknowns i can solve these equations by Newton Raphson that could be a way to go okay that could be a way to go you could just give this problem to the Newton Raphson solver Newton Raphson solver keeps guessing every time it differentiates very very painful task every time it differentiates and then it well I can do the same thing by a little bit modification which is called as Gauss Newton method so that's what I'm going to now uh, derive at okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with an iterative procedure to solve the same problem. I want to solve this problem. Okay. But with a little bit of modification. Okay. So what I'm going to do now here. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to linearize this model. Okay. If I linearize this model that will help me solve the problem in slightly different way. Okay. So let's say, let's say theta bar is my guess theta bar is my guess solution okay theta bar is my guess solution now i am going to linearize this model in the neighborhood of theta bar okay so what will it be y is equal to f x theta bar plus do f by do theta 1 okay i am going to i am going to linearize this using taylor series expansion okay now this e here e here was defined when the model was exact okay now i'm approximating the model so i'm going to replace this by a term epsilon i'm going to replace this by a term epsilon now just remember this data x this data x 
is known to me x is given to me i have collected data y is known to me if x is known to me and if i have a guess theta this value is computable this is a known value okay what is what is this delta theta 1 delta theta 1 is theta 1 which is unknown minus theta 1 bar perturbation from guess solution this is perturbation from the guess solution okay so this is my theta 1 bar likewise this one is theta m minus theta m bar you have this partial derivatives appearing here okay when you do linearization where do you compute the partial derivatives at which point at the known value right you compute the partial derivative at the known value so this partial derivative is computed at theta equal to theta bar this partial derivative is computed at theta equal to theta bar so this partial derivatives are known to me okay now now if you look at this linearized model so you can view this as a transformation a local transformation of the model in which in which the transform model looks like a linear in parameter model why this becomes a linear in parameter model with respect to delta theta 1 delta theta 2 delta theta 3 this is a linear in parameter model original model is not linear in parameter the transform model through Taylor series approximation is linear in parameter okay so instead of solving instead of solving for theta directly I could choose to solve for delta theta I could choose to solve for delta theta if I solve for delta theta then I can recover a new theta by adding delta theta to theta I will get a new guess and I go on doing this like in Newton Raphson okay so the next step after linearization is is to write this equation for the linearized model so okay so what I am going to do is this will be y1 is equal to f x 1 theta bar plus do f x1 theta bar do theta 1 delta theta 1 plus this is computed at theta bar epsilon 1 then you have the second equation y1 is equal to f x2 theta bar plus do f x2 theta bar do theta 1 delta theta 1 do f epsilon 2 and likewise I have capital N equations the notation becomes little bit complex but if you understand the concept it is not at all difficult so I write these equations I write these equations at theta m delta theta m plus epsilon n so okay I have capital N equations with me now okay which are linearized linearizing transformation through Taylor series okay these are partial derivatives these are the partial derivatives computed at x1 theta bar x1 theta bar this partial derivative computed at x2 theta bar x2 theta bar and so on so at each point each data point you are linearizing the <coughs> nonlinear equation using Taylor series approximation ignoring the terms higher than the second order and getting this transformed linear equation okay now with respect to delta theta 1 delta theta 2 delta theta m these are linear in parameter because these partial derivatives are computed at a fixed point they are known to you okay these are known to you 
this this f is known to you this y is known to you okay so now i can apply a transpose a inverse business okay i have to do it iteratively so now how to come up with the a transpose a inverse business let's go back here now watch carefully what i am doing now on the left hand side is going to be y1 minus f x1 theta bar y2 minus f x2 theta bar likewise y n minus f x n theta bar is equal to is equal to this do do theta 1 and we create this matrix okay this plus of course we have all these errors which are cropping up so plus epsilon 1 epsilon 2 up to epsilon n okay epsilon n so let me call this matrix as a theta bar why theta bar because theta bar is a guess theta bar is a guess okay so this matrix is a function of your guess okay but if if you give me this if you give me this equation here y1 to yn is known theta bar is a guess so this part f is known so this vector is known okay let's call this vector as delta delta y let's call this vector as let's call this vector as a theta let's call this vector as delta theta okay then then we know how to solve this we know how to get least square estimates of delta theta isn't it we know how to get the square estimates of delta theta so the model that we have finally got is delta y is equal to a theta bar a which is function of theta bar into delta theta plus let's call this epsilon error vector okay that is these are all small epsilon and this is a big epsilon if you can't see it you should think about it as a big epsilon so let me draw it as capital epsilon so this is my capital epsilon and what i would like to do is to find out now minimize epsilon 1 square to epsilon n square with respect to delta theta this problem is can be solved analytically how to solve this problem so what i do here is delta theta least square is equal to a theta bar transpose a theta bar inverse a theta bar transpose delta y this is my solution okay this is my solution and then what do i do with this solution okay what i do is to generate an iteration so i will say now new theta theta new equal to theta bar plus delta theta d square okay delta theta d square what do i do with new theta i put it back i relinearize around this new theta okay and then keep on doing this when will you stop not 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 yeah first vector delta y should become as small as possible 
डेल्टा वाई शुड बिकम एज स्मॉल एज पॉसिबल और इन अदर वर्ड्स यू वॉन्ट यू वॉन्ट सिग्मा आई गोइंग फ्रॉम सो वी हैड दिस फाइव विच वॉज सिग्मा आई गोइंग फ्रॉम वन टू वन ई आई स्क्वेर दिस शुड बिकम स्मॉलर दैन सर्टन वैल्यू प्री स्पेसिफाइड वैल्यू यू वॉन्टेड टू मिनिमाइज एरर इन द ओरिजिनल मॉडल दिस इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्म प्रॉब्लम ओके मिनिमाइजिंग एरर इन द ट्रांसफॉर्म प्रॉब्लम डजेंट मीन मिनिमाइजिंग एरर इन द ओरिजिनल प्रॉब्लम ओके सो योर टर्मिनेशन क्राइटेरिया इज बेस्ड ऑन द ओरिजिनल एरर्स नॉट ऑन द ओरिजिनल एरर्स कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड एक्चुअली एक्चुअली वॉट शी एज राइटली पॉइंटेड आउट इज दैट दिस फर्स्ट फैक्टर विल गिव यू द ओरिजिनल एरर्स फॉर एवरी गेस ओके इफ दैट वैक्टर बिकम स्मॉल यू आर डन ओके सो यू आर इटरेटिवली गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट जस्ट लाइक न्यूटन रैपन मेथड or newton's method which we call this is gauss newton method why gauss neither gauss nor newton invented this but the word newton comes because you are doing taylor series approximation and locally linearizing okay why gauss because we are using these squares linear these squares okay so these two giants are merged to form this name name of these two giants is for merged to give this name gauss newton method to this so if i write a formal algorithm of course i will say that instead of theta bar i will say that you start with a guess theta 0 okay and then you get theta 1 from theta 0 and theta 2 from theta 0 and so on so my iterative algorithm would look like my iterative algorithm would look like this theta k plus 1 is equal to theta k plus delta theta k delta theta k my iterative algorithm will read like this and where delta theta k is the solution of a theta k transpose a theta k delta theta k is equal to a theta k transpose delta y i will call this delta y k because this right hand side also depends upon theta bar okay so if i write a iterative algorithm where k goes from here k starts from k starts from 0 1 2 okay and you stop only when the termination criteria is met okay so this is gauss newton method this can be used to to estimate parameters of any nonlinear in parameter model any nonlinear in parameter model you don't have to worry about uh linear in parameter case and uh just like newton raphson you can use this uh, iteratively to come up with a estimates of the parameters well remember that whether you get a meaningful solution or not will depend upon what is your initial guess so this guy is most important theta 0 okay you have to give a correct guess and this will come only from your engineering knowledge okay so how do you give a good guess okay uh that's where you need your engineering physics chemistry whatever background to come up with a good guess if you give a good guess this method will convert to the uh solution this is an iterative procedure unlike the earlier case where you could form you could find the global solution in one shot okay that's not possible here here you may not get a global solution you might get a local solution depending upon your guess you might go towards a local minimum you are minimizing uh problem iteratively by uh you know formulating uh a linearized problem which is which looks like linear least squares and then a sequence of linear least square see what is done in newton's method nonlinear problem is solved by sequence of linear algebraic equations you know you form set of linear algebraic equations and you hope that that sequence converges to the true value of the solution that is a true solution okay what is done here you form a sequence of linear least square approximations okay you form a sequence of linear least square 
problems which you hope to converge to the which you hope to converge to the true optimum solution okay so this was this was the last in the series of lectures of approximations uh, and now on from so, so, so we come to close uh, of this module on problem discretization and problem transformation in the next class onwards we will start looking at the tools ok. So, the tools will be solving A x equal to B nonlinear algebraic equations OD initial value problems and the fourth tool is of course stochastic tools which I am not going to discuss in this class. So, I hope to cover now three tools post medicine and these three tools are A x equal to B what you will see is that solving A x equal to B there is lot more to it than what you have done in your undergraduate. Okay, I will be spending almost 3 weeks on just how to solve A x equal to B. Okay, you already have taste of large problems right 10,000 equations in 10,000 unknowns not, not uncommon when you are solving partial differential equations. So, you better have some better you know, wise schemes to solve A x equal to B otherwise you will end up into uh, you know the computation time can become exceedingly large. So, we will look at A x equal to B look at uh, nonlinear algebraic equation solving and move on to OD initial value problems and that is where we will we'll close uh, the post mid sem. So, the tools will be covered in the post mid sem that will cover the entire course.